Yeah, I'm Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> that should work, right? Hopefully, yes. yes. Okay. Um, so you might have seen it already, but Google, I think, like Google already um, introduced this thing called Caps Lock. So if you never heard of it, it's basically checking the capabilities of your Go dependencies. Uh, it's very interesting because if you don't trust the dependencies or like the dependency tree, you can just go to your project, run Caps Lock, and you can basically see what are the things that your dependencies are doing, like uh, opening files or uh, syscalls and stuff like that. So you can take any project, run Caps Lock, and hopefully this should show, like in my case, okay, it's just one dependency, and uh, it's saying, okay, it's running exec, it's running uh, opening files. Sorry? Zoom in a bit. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not prepared for this kind of things. No. Oh shit, it's <laughs> Give me a second, I'm not, I don't do that often, as you can see. That is probably the way of doing it, right? So, hopefully you can read it. So, well, it, you just take any project, really, and you just run um, caps lock packages dot, or whatever the command line arguments are and you get like a small analysis. You can also output that as JSON. This could be very useful if you have like untrusted dependencies or you just like want to see what's happening under the hood with all of your like dependency tree. In this case, it's just uh, this library, but you can imagine that this is going to the tree of your, of your dependencies. Can you run it in verbose mode? Like will it tell you where the exec calls are and stuff like that? I think it does actually. Noisy? No, wait. I think dash output equals Oh yeah, that's 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 the correct one. Uh, v just V. Yeah, so you have to call call path. So uh, who's calling it, and then what function actually trigger the capability files or syscalls, and and you actually see what's happening under the hood. So this is just a like a stupid repo that I have, but you can really run it on a lot of things, and uh, the output could also be JSON. So. You can use your parser for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's quite useful, I think. I, I'm not using it that often, but you know, it's a new thing. Yeah. Is it possible to define a Linux kernel version and then get like capability? I don't think it's that advanced, but PRs are open, I think. So probably, pro I haven't looked into the, the, the source code of this one, ironically, um, but it's probably something you can do. I mean, it, it, anyways, I think it, it does implement um, an ASD, and it's going to the function calls and just checking those, and defines capabilities. They're not like Linux capabilities, by the way. It's just capabilities that they're defined like that. And they categorize like the system calls, for example, or just the function calls, and, and, uh, and that's it. So I don't think you can do more than that. Mm -hmm. And this changes sometimes with the Linux kernel version. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but maybe we're confusing cap like Linux kernel capabilities versus like this project capabilities, which is not exactly equal, okay. as far as I remember and know. So, so could be useful. Sorry. It's actually used by my colleague. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get it. It's actually used by my colleague. Oh, okay then. <laughs> well. Oh. oh, yeah, but we know him. This is the burn organizer. Yeah. He organizes in burn. That's true. Yeah, you already told me to do that. Where did you see that, by the way? Like, uh, on the right side. Oh, on the right. oh, okay, because of the... Wow. You can spot your colleagues from there? Okay, cool. <laughs> that, that was my lighting talk. Like, it's a two-man thing. But it's, it's actually pretty useful, I think, if you start using it also in your CI or something. Awesome.